Hello everyone, Pastor Winston here. Hey, look, we're heading in to the end of chapter 6 of the Sermon on the Mount. That's the middle chapter of the sermon. And we're just going to dive right in here right away. We're in chapter 6. We're going to be looking at verses 24 through 34. So if you've got your Bibles, you want to grab them uh, so we can take a look at that. So I'm going to go over here to this uh, PowerPoint that I prepared with this. And we'll take a look and see what we got. And we're looking, we're looking really at um, the second of a set of goals. Uh, the first uh, two goals were the two treasures and the two eyes, where Jesus is just advising us about what we're putting our hopes in and what we're putting our eyes on and, and the results of the light versus the darkness when we, when we look at good things or we look at bad things. That's what's going to happen. And now he gives us the two lords and the two anxieties. And so we'll take a look at the, the two lords um, in this goals section and what they have, what Jesus has to say for us here. And he says, you know, the two lords, Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And you know, that last word, money, is kind of interesting, a little bit of a, a word study on that. Um, the, the God, he's comparing the money as a God. He's saying money or mammon, which you'll find in a lot of English texts even, because that word was carried over into the Greek text. And really, uh, it, it, it means not just money, but it means anything that you do to gain. I mean, it's, you know, because if you, money gets you stuff and it helps you gain access to power and, and is a symbol of success. And he's saying this is, this is a powerful spiritual force. And so he gives it this name Mammon, which is a pagan name. And, and to remind us of its power to draw us into its orbit and out from under the service of Christ. So this is really serious stuff that Jesus wants us to pay attention to. And, you know, my friend Dale Bruner, and he looks at two anxieties and he says, you know, God is telling us that that the gift of life is greater than food and the gift of the body is greater than what you wear. So now we'll, we'll take a look at the rest of this, uh, this other anxiety and uh, the the two anxieties here are basically what you uh, have to eat and, and what you're going to wear. And so in verse 25, Jesus says, It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. In verse 27, Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Well, you could probably cost yourself some time, but you certainly are going to gained any time by anxiety. And then he says, you know, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all these things that you worry about will be added to you. You know, one of the homework assignments I have for you here is to read through this section, which is verses uh, 25 to 34. And there are seven reasons that Jesus gives us for not to worry. And I want you to see if you can pick that out. And I'll give you a hint where you can find the answer. If you have a life application Bible, then turn to this passage in that Bible, and you'll find the chart there that tells you all about that. But to proceed on here, we, we see that what Brunner says, Jesus encourages us to take our own selfish anxieties, that is, for things for ourself, and look around God's world for a place where we can throw ourselves into a cause for the poor. You, when you think about, you know, what happened at City Serve, that's kind of what we did there. And it was time after time and person after person, I hear them talk about how fulfilling that was and how rich an experience it was, richer than anything that they could imagine. And so to summarize chapter six, um, which really is a call to faith. 
Chapter 6 calls us to faith in God above all things. There's a old um, Dolomite chant that really into itself is a great commentary on chapter 6. Let me read it to you. Not so in haste, my heart. Have faith in God and wait. Although he linger long, he never comes too late. Until he cometh, rest. Nor grudge the hours that roll. The feet that wait for God are soonest at the goal. Then hold thee still, my heart, for I shall wait his lead. And Paul said this in Romans 2, 7 and 8. To those who wait by patience in, doing, in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality. He will certainly give them life eternal. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. So this week, read through this whole section of chapter 6, verses 24 to 34. And hear what Jesus is setting forth for our life. And maybe things will help you to rest in God and reduce anxiety and worry and, and everything that comes along with that. So I want you to just have a good week of resting in Christ. God bless you and give you his peace.